Howdy folks, uh, in the last video I was playing around with painting normal maps using the texture mass paint. We're going to try and build out towards doing something like this, where we can have more distinct brush marks and some more interesting things going on within those brush marks. So that's the aim. This workflow is still pretty experimental, uh, so we'll have to jump through some hoops along the way. In my case, I'm not going to continue from this file. I'm basically going to uh, kind of start again in a slightly different direction. So I am going to keep my lights, but I'm going to pretty much delete everything else. So I'll get rid of all this stuff. I've got my test pig head here. I'm going to start off with that one. The major difference uh, that we're going to try and do in this one is we're going to try and create some procedural noise using height fields. So I'm going to put down a texture mask paint to get us started. And we can just paint on some values there. We'll hook this guy up to the right hand input of our texture mask paint. Now we are generating a mask out through here. I'd like to be able to use my height field tools uh, when generating that mask. So the best way I've found to do this so far is to generate our own height field. And hook it up into the um, right hand input. The height field mask that's been created within the texture mask paint is orientated in a different direction. So we need to change it from ZX to XY here. Then what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to allow editing of contents here to dive in. So we can dive in here and this is the painting setup. Now we don't need to figure all of this out. I just care about what's happening with the mask that I'm creating. And the mask that I'm creating is coming in through here. So as far as I understand it, what's happening here is brush strokes that are being saved out are uh, running through a loop here looking for UDIMs. So that's what's happening in this section just through here. Now I'm not particularly worried about UDIMs for the moment and I want to keep my life fairly simple. So really all I want to have happen is the brush strokes uh, that are coming through on this branch here. I want them to be uh, affecting my volume height fields that I'm creating. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, node here which is uh, multiplying the strokes by the alpha and I'm going to try and copy it out here. Now the problem is uh, that it's stuck within the loop and right off the top of my head I don't know an easy way around that so let's just do this instead copy and paste it up here then cut it come back in and paste it again right so that's sort of the hacky way around that. Now what I want to do is just avoid this loop altogether so I'm going to go from my volume resample out here to the first input and I will go from my volume resample here with the brush strokes to the second input and then I'm going to go back out to the blast out here so I'm just going to basically avoid this section through here that should mean that my painted mask uh, is now coming through on this new height fields that I have created so we can go back and we can test against that so if I zoom back in on my pig over here and do, do, do paint it more white, we should be able to come back down to our mask. Uh, we can see that the paint has come through to our mask height field. I'm sure if I put a bit more thought into it, I can end up using the mask that's already being created here. But the advantage to uh, doing it this way is that we get a nice big height field. And a lot of the height field tools are set up by default to use nice big sizes. Um, so this was the quickest and sort of dirtiest way I could find to get my mass back out. Let's put down a transform underneath this guy and we can transform it back. So we can transform it back here. And now we've got a height field just like uh, any other height field with a mask on it. So let's take this guy and let's pump it through a height field noise. The height field noise is going to get applied everywhere and that's not really what I want. I just want it in the masked areas. I can hook up the second input here to the mask. Now, I'd like to put that through a height field remap in case I need it later on. So a lot of the time with the height field remap, we want to uh, remap between 0 and 1. So let's change this over to mask, because that's what we're looking to affect. And we can hit compute range here, and I'll just set this to output between 0 and 1. So I'd like to get lots of small details into these areas if I can. Let's change our element size down to 10. Let's bring our amplitude down to 20. And maybe we'll change it from sparse convolution over to Chebyshev. Uh, I often scale the noise in at least one axis, so I'll put up to four here. And we get these kind of grouting type marks that you might get uh, doing a lino cut or something like that. 
Now we can also play around with post processing here. And I found playing around with the bias can be kind of useful in terms of uh, turning the effect up and down. If you watch any of my other videos, you know you can get lots of different shapes going on with height fields. And in a sense, I'm starting to think of height fields as just a, a texture making toolkit, much like what you'd have in Substance Designer. Now what I want to do is take this over to Cops. So I'll plug it in down into my null that I had from previous. Let's go and create a cop network. Let's put down a SOP import. I am going to use the desktop that I have for doing this kind of stuff where I keep my cops over on the right and my SOPs over on the left. And I have a composite down the bottom. Let's set up our SOP import to look at our height field. And we should be able to hit set planes from SOP and we should see that we've got a height and we have our mask coming through. Now we don't have a huge amount of height, so there isn't a very wide range in there, but our mask has some interesting information. One of the things I wanna keep in sync when I'm going through this workflow is I want to be able to move up and down through the resolution uh, when I'm painting my mask. Now that's particularly important because painting masks at higher resolution, the results show up a little bit slower. So I'd like to be able to move up and down through the resolutions uh, to be able to block things in quickly and then come back and refine it later. So really I want this resolution to drive the size of my comp over here. And I also want it to drive the size of my height field up here. Is I will just use an expression in here uh, to ensure that I get the correct sizes. So the expression uh, that I'm going to use needs to evaluate for when this guy here is 256, the actual number that's being generated is zero then one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six. You get the idea, right? Now, how do I know that? Well, I can right click here and I can copy the parameter. I can come back up to uh, this node and I can pick any other one of these and I can just right click and say, paste relative reference. And if I click again, I can see the value, right? So the value here is two. And if I was to just pop out the parameter pane for this node here, go back to my height field. And if I was to change this over to uh, 256, you can see the value is zero, one, then two, all the way down along. Uh, that's how I know that uh, the, the token value for this particular menu item is being evaluated. So I need this number one to equal 512 uh, and I need this number two to equal uh, 1024. So I need to put an expression in here that's going to equal those values. So let's right click here and say copy parameter and then I can right click and say paste relative reference. And that's just channel reference in the uh, the value from here, which in this case will be two because it's set to 1024. I'm gonna click in here now and I'm gonna hit Alt and E and that's gonna open up this guy up here. Now you can zoom in and out here using uh, control plus and minus. So I'll make it nice and big to make it easy to see. And the expression I ended up using was the following, POW for to the power of, open your bracket, now it gives you a little example of what we've got to write. These values are all going to be to the power of two. So I can put in two here, comma. It's going to be raised by two at the moment to the power of one. And that's not going to get me the number that I require. So I need to open another bracket in here. And I need to put plus eight and then close the bracket. That's the first bracket. This is the second. I need one more bracket at the end to finish it out and click apply. Now I can go and test this. We can see the value is 1024, so that looks good. Now put it down to 512. Yeah, still evaluating correctly. Now 256. So that seems to be working fine, at least for the values that I need. Uh, so I'm gonna copy this guy now, and I'm gonna right click and paste the relative reference in there. So now, whenever I set the values here, it will change the size of my height field, which should give me an appropriate size mass so I'm not losing any resolution. Now, I also need the same thing to happen over here in SOPS. There's not much point in generating a high resolution mask out here in height fields and then downsampling it here by accident. So over here on images, I'm going to say override the size and I can just copy the height field size here and I can paste it in and that is evaluating correctly. And I'll just copy this one and paste it because they're always going to be square anyway. Now, all of those should be linked up to the uh, texture mask size. So when it's set to 512, I get 512 here and I get 512 over here. So I'm maximizing my resolution.